Oh no, quit that. You're ruining the moment. That I had created with the Unity that would allow me to type in commands and everything. And to show him that I could use these commands and how it worked, added a plain cue. You better make more videos or else. Don't become Danny 2.0! Can't wait! Three months is shorter than six months! So 1.5 months next time? I need the square. You know, I'm starting to feel like time and I have some pretty serious issues. Okay, let's cut right to the chase. Where in the world have I been for the last eight plus months since I made the snake game that literally ruins friendships? I'm easily <laughs> Well, I hate to disappoint you, but I'm probably gonna make another video on it. I really don't want to make this video longer than it's probably already gonna be. Now that that's out of the way, what exactly happened in the first video? I have no idea. JK. <clears throat> I created the project, added a square that can spin, implemented the ability to add parts to the square, added a basic UI, broke the ability to add parts to the square, added the ability to spin! Added more UI, then made the game cause your eyes to bleed slightly less. If this brief rundown wasn't enough, make sure to watch part one to get a better understanding of what the game is and where development is up to this point. And now that you're caught up and know what's happening, the first thing- the, What? You haven't watched part one yet? What are you waiting for? Go watch it, you silly goose. I'll wait. The first thing that I decided to work on post episode one was to improve the placement of parts a little bit, to make it easier to understand what you're doing and where and how the parts are being placed. This was done mostly by adding this little ghost effect to the part that you're currently placing. Do not test me, small fur child, as I will release the crack in a- Where are you going? Where are you going? Why are you running? What the? Brother, what? Wait, wait, wait. Does it... <laughs> After that pain, I went on to redesigning the toolbar to match with the new UI better, and implementing the ability to switch between different modes for when you want to build and when you want to extract. Also, you listen to me. You listen to me very close. That, that right there, that's not real. It's fake. It's a mirage. You never saw it. I forgot to mention I also added manual extracting. Gotta start somewhere. Moving on to thrusters, even though there's gonna be multiple different possible thrusters in the game for you to use, to add even more depth and complexity to the game, I also wanna make it to where each thruster can be upgraded to make it more powerful, more efficient, etc. To do this, I began working on the different systems and UI that will allow you to select different upgrade paths for all the different parts. To make things more flexible, the upgrades are also not preset. They're actually dynamically calculated as you upgrade the parts. This is done primarily through the power of a lot of math. My teachers were right. I did have to use math again. With the upgrade system fully in place, it was time to start adding some more thrusters to the game. All of these thrusters will have their own strengths and weaknesses to balance them out with each other, but they will also progressively get better than the previous thruster. Some of the thrusters that I included at this point, but not all, are the hot water thruster, the cold gas thruster, and the RCS thruster. Wait, why won't it let me place you? I, I should have plenty of- oh! <laughs> To keep you from having to constantly buy fuel in the later stages of the game, I also added the automatic fuel generator that will passively generate fuel using the credits that you have. Okay, I have a confession to make. So you know how literally at the end of the last video, I did this complete graphics overhaul and a new UI and everything? I'm already not happy with it. Not to mention, so I decided it was probably time for another overhaul, and I had the perfect idea. 
All right, here's what I have of the new UI so far. I think it's coming together pretty nicely. So you can see nothing has really changed much down here on the toolbar, but over here on the side, a lot has changed. We got the new UI style. We got some new tool tips. Next thing I want to do is start working on the tool tips over at the store because right now- oh! What happened? So here you can really see the new UI in its completed form. We have the new toolbar, the new part menu, and the new info panels, which you cannot collapse if you want to get it out of the way. I also took the time to bring the upgrade UI to the new standard so that I don't have to deal with <sighs> Because I wanted there to be a little bit more resource management involved in the game as well, I also decided to split some of the resources into credits and a new crystal resource. So now instead of direct Directly getting credits, you get crystal from mining, and then you can sell the crystal to get credits. Okay, it's time. It is time for me to implement something that I have been putting off for half the development. Something that almost every game has and this game needs. Because I am tired of having to start over every time I want to test something in the game. It is time to implement the magic of saving and loading into Jacob's Play. Now that I probably made that sound way more dramatic than it actually is, I decided to start small, you know, do something right so that I'd really feel good about myself moving forward on this part of the project, and made it to where I could just save and load the amount of credits and crystal that I had. My own capabilities frighten me. Now, for Jacob Square, I decided to just use a simple JSON architecture for the persistent data management. Hopefully, this means it should be as simple as just serializing and deserializing a custom data handler class. I'm just coping because I'm really scared about saving and loading the REV itself. Huh? It's barely moving and I'm just- Why am I just swimming in crystal right now? How did I go this long without noticing a bug this major? And then when I'm trying to get B-roll, it decides to rear its ugly head. I think that's enough game development for the day. Alright, most of the heavy lifting is done. So now in theory, I should be able to- Never mind. Alright, I think I found and fixed the problem. So we're gonna go ahead and try it again. You know what? I'm gonna count that as a win. Look at that. Look at that. Less red must be more good. Now only if I could figure out how to make there be no red. Ah. Code ID 10T, I see. Oh, oh my god, it actually almost worked. Ah! Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Stop it. Start it. Load. It's beautiful! From here, I decided to work on something completely related and added crystal storage to the game. Because, you know, there's something else you have to manage. Also, don't worry, this absolutely gorgeous art is placeholder. From here, I wanted to take a little break working on the really complex stuff. I'm looking at you saving and loading. And decided to work on some more basic polish slash quality of life features. These included some new notifications to inform the player of different notifications. Some new building effects. Wow! Bulldozing so I can actually remove parts from the REV, which hasn't been possible this entire time. And camera panning to make it a lot easier to work on REVs that are very large in scale. Thank you very much for this monstrosity, Trevor. I also decided to add some depth to the scene by adding this really cool parallax effect using a plane in the background that moves slightly different from the way the camera moves. And when I replace that texture with a star texture I made and add a couple more layers, it ends up looking like this. So beautiful. And finally, I put some effort into adding some visual effects to the actual extraction itself, just to make your eyes bleed a little bit less. You're welcome. And that brings us to the end of part two for Jacob Square. Even though I haven't been really alive on the internet as much over the last eight months, for reasons that I'll get into in this video, make sure to watch out for that. I have definitely been hard at work on Jacob Square still and coming up with some ideas for some future projects that I'd like to work on. So if you liked this video and you like the projects that I'm working on, make sure to check out some of the other videos and projects that I have available on the channel. And I'll see you in whatever video I upload next. Bye. Oh, <laughs>